Once we're comfortable with this machine being able to support Windows Vista, we'll click the Install Now button. After a short moment, the Install Windows dialog box comes up. If you recall, we had one setting during the installation last time that uh, was asking us just to install. But since we're already running an operating system, the first option we get is Get Important Updates for Installation. This is a nice addition to these update programs because we have a DVD-ROM. It's got a static configuration. Whenever that ROM was pressed, that's the version that we have. But there may have been updates since then to the installation program. And so we have some options here where we can go online to get the latest updates for installation, which is a nice option to use. And if you have that option available, always choose that option. It will make your upgrade process go better. In our particular case, to speed this along, I'm going to say don't get the latest updates. The process will be exactly the same regardless of which one of these you choose. You're then presented with the Windows End User License Agreement. And if you agree to everything in the license terms, you can click I accept the license term and click Next. Now, when we did our original clean install in that previous video about installing Windows Vista, the only option we had was a clean install. But in this case, we have an upgrade option. Before, all we had was this custom clean copy option. But now, because we already have an operating system, Windows has also checked our machine and made sure that we have enough disk space and we have enough memory. And since we have everything in place, this upgrade option is now available. Let's choose that one. Once we chose the upgrade, our Windows Vista said that there were potential issues detected with some installed applications. You will probably get this almost every time. And what you want to do is click for more information. And it says that the network adapter, the Microsoft Explorer, Windows Messenger, there's a number of things on here that may not work properly once you get this installed. And as long as your list isn't too big and doesn't contain some real critical pieces, you're probably in good shape. So we already know we have a backup if we ever need to go back to the snapshot. So we're OK with that. Let's click Next. We now go through the upgrade process. And this is very, very similar to the installation process that happened when we did a clean install of Windows Vista. So if you're doing either one of these, the process at this point very, very similar. We're going to let this now go through the process of copying files, installing different pieces on here. And then once that's done, we'll speed this up. And when it's done, we'll come back to where we are and see what our next step is going to be. Now that Windows Vista is started up, we get the Setup Windows dialog box that says Use Recommended Settings, Install Important Updates Only, or Ask Me Later. You should almost always, unless there's a very specific reason, always use the Recommended Settings. And you can always change those things later on. We then get a request to review our date and time settings. I am in Eastern. It should automatically adjust the clock. And the time is correct. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Let's start up Windows Vista. During this first startup process, we get this tour of Windows Vista and how it's running. I'll move this back over to my primary screen here. It says that getting it done just got more fun. So it's going through this process. In fact, if I scroll down, you'll see this a little better, where it's checking the computer's performance. And it's going to determine how to configure its initial setup based on what the computer's performance really is. And it's adjusting things like uh, how the memory is being used, how the graphics are set up on the screen, and a number of other features. And there's Windows Vista. Welcome. We now prepare the initial desktop configuration. And we're nearly done with the upgrade process. As Windows told us when it was doing the upgrade process, there was some hardware that was not exactly compatible with Windows Vista. So we do get this Windows Vista startup view right here. But let's also move back up out of this. Let's scroll up. You can see my Windows Vista is taking a little bit more resolution than my screen has where it needs to install a driver software for our Ethernet controller. And you'll probably get a number of these things if you have hardware 
that does not have drivers that come with Windows Vista. So we need to locate and install driver software. Let's try that. It will go through the process now of beginning the driver installation program. We get our little Windows Vista pop-up box there, letting us know that it's now doing something with the drivers. And now it's going to ask for a disk. I don't have one. Show me some other options. And I'll probably go back out to the manufacturer of VirtualBox, get the driver for Vista, install that from there, or find out where those drivers happen to be. So make sure that you gather all of those things beforehand, or you may run into a, a situation like this where you need to figure out where the driver is going to be for that new piece of hardware. Notice also on our desktop is our upgrade check program where it does say, I hope your upgrade to Windows Vista goes well. So that proves that indeed it was an upgrade. that We did not do a fresh, clean install to this hard drive. And now what I'm going to do is go find a driver and make sure I get that last piece of hardware upgraded to Windows Vista, and I'll be completely done with this upgrade. Let's see what we've learned about our upgrading Windows process. Our first question on upgrading Windows is, is what is the migration path from Windows 2000 to Windows Vista? Is that a clean install or is it an in-place upgrade? We know it can be either one of those. And if you recall, Windows 2000, being relatively old, does not have an upgrade path that takes you right into Windows Vista. So you would have to do a clean install if you were jumping directly to those. Now one thing you may remember is you can go from Windows 2000 to Windows XP as an upgrade. Then you can go from Windows XP to Windows Vista. So you can't go there directly, but you could take a couple of hops in between. True or false, hardware may not be compatible between operating systems. Well, we've already seen already that that is true. You may have situations where the hardware isn't quite the same. We need to make sure we have updated drivers if there are drivers at all. There may be occasions when you have pieces of hardware that simply will not work with new versions or different versions of an operating system. And last question, what is the best use of the user state migration tool? And that's to do large-scale operating system upgrades and migrations. If you are in a large environment and you're doing a number of upgrades, you're probably going to make use of the user state migration tool. Well, that covers what we needed to know for this Upgrading Windows module from 2.2701, Section 3.3. At this point, you should be pretty comfortable not only with installing a version of Windows, but also doing an upgrade from one version to another. If you'd like to watch any of our other free a videos, we have message boards. You can send me a message and much more. You can visit our website at freeaplus.com.